When Christopher Columbus returned to Spain to inform the monarchy of his discovery of the New World, he could not have possibly imagined the profound effect his journey would have on the future. Nations would flourish in the wake of this voyage, spawning new ideas, a pioneering spirit, and an ingenuity that has spread new technologies, medicines, and economic growth throughout the world. Centuries later, humanity would reach out to the heavens and truly touch new worlds. Our lives today were shaped by the actions of those early explorers, just as the lives of future generations will be shaped by today's pioneers who push the boundaries of our capabilities and knowledge. With the launch of STS-122 and its multinational crew of seven astronauts, the International Space Station will grow in both volume and scientific capability. This flight of the shuttle Atlantis to the station will be a major milestone in the assembly of the outpost, marking the beginning of a new era in international spaceflight and space science. Previous shuttle missions have paved the way for Atlantis's flight. Over the past year and a half, Astronauts have installed and repaired solar arrays to increase the power of the station, spread radiators to boost its cooling, and added a connecting module that will serve as a pathway to new laboratories. The highlight of the mission will be the delivery and installation of the European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory, the first scientific expansion of the orbiting complex since the U.S. Destiny Lab was launched in 2001. The crew of STS-122 is a mix of seasoned veterans and first-time space travelers. Leading the mission will be veteran astronaut Steve Frick, a Pennsylvania native who served as the pilot for station assembly mission STS-110. Navy commander and Georgia Tech alumnus Alan Poindexter will make his first voyage into space as the pilot of Atlantis. During the mission spacewalks, he will serve as the in-cabin spacewalk coordinator and help with operations of the shuttle and station robotics. Mission specialist Leland Melvin, another first-time flyer, will be among those who operate the space station robotic arm during critical assembly tasks once Atlantis reaches the station. Melvin will also control the shuttle robotic arm as it is used to inspect Atlantis's heat shield. Mission Specialist Rex Walheim, a veteran spacewalker and Frick's fellow crew member on STS-110, rejoins him on this flight. The former NASA flight controller is the lead spacewalker and will take part in all spacewalks planned for Atlantis' flight. Oregon native Stan Love is an avid outdoorsman who will be making his first flight on STS-122. Love will conduct the third spacewalk of the mission with Walheim and will operate both the shuttle and space station robotic arms during the flight. The crew of Atlantis includes two veteran astronauts from the European Space Agency, Hans Schlegel and Leopold Eihartz. Schlegel will conduct the first two spacewalks of the flight with Walheim, hooking up the Columbus lab. Eihartz will oversee the activation of Columbus, working in concert with ground controllers, and will remain on the station to continue the setup and begin research in Columbus as a long-duration crew member. Atlantis will bring home astronaut Dan Tani, who has been a resident on the station since October. The Columbus Laboratory is 23 feet long and 15 feet in diameter. Its facilities offer tremendous new scientific capabilities for the station and will be the center of the European Space Agency's activities on the complex. Columbus is a lot of laboratory space. Um, space Station up till now has been a construction project. Uh, there has been some science done on board, but as hard as science is to do, it's even tougher in a construction zone. Um, and Columbus will add some much needed lab space that's dedicated to research and not having to do double duty as uh, operating the main station and being a uh, transfer corridor for lots and lots of people and things. And not only do we get to bring it up and install it in the space station, but we get to go inside and work in it afterwards and see the dramatic change to the space station with the addition of this new volume. Well, it's kind of like adding a whole new uh, member to the team, because now the uh, Europeans will have their own laboratory module. They can do their own experiments, and they can uh, let their research dictate uh, what they want to do, and they will be able to do it with a beautiful state-of-the-art laboratory module on board the space station exposed to uh, zero gravity and do all the kind of research that they want to do. Three spacewalks are planned for the mission as the astronauts install Columbus and continue outfitting the station. 
During the mission's first spacewalk, mission specialists Rex Walheim and European astronaut Hans Schlegel will attach a grapple fixture or handle that the robotic arm will use to lift Columbus up and out of the cargo bay. Columbus is such a large addition to the station that there was not room in the shuttle's cargo bay to launch the science facility with the grapple fixture attached. Space Station robotic arm operators Stan Love and Leland Melvin will capture the fixture with the station's Canadarm 2, lift Columbus from the payload bay, and attach it to the station. Once Columbus is installed, the astronauts will run several tests to make sure the module is sealed and pressurized before it is opened for the first time the following day. I, I think once we all go in, you know, uh, Leo and Hans will go in first and make sure everything's okay, no cobwebs in there or anything, but uh, it's going to be very exciting and, and you know, uh, a testament to the, the teamwork from all of the, all of the nations that have put this, put this vehicle together is just going to be... Uh, very, very, very fun. NASA's ground control will be in charge for some of the initial activation of Columbus's systems. But once the laboratory's computers are up and running, the European Space Agency's all-new Columbus Control Center in Germany will take over. Walheim and Schlegel will venture out again for the mission's second spacewalk. During that excursion, they will replace a nitrogen tank on the station's truss. The nitrogen is used to pressurize the station's cooling system. The mission's third spacewalk will see Walheim and Love work outside Columbus to attach two European science facilities to the newly installed lab. One experiment package includes a trio of instruments that will study the sun. Another experiment includes a variety of eight different investigations that will study the space environment. This milestone mission to the space station marks the culmination of several years' efforts by workers around the world to design, construct, and launch the Columbus module. From the Columbus Control Center in Oberpfaffenhoven, Germany, to the shuttle main engine test stands at Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. From the orbiter processing facility at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, to the neutral buoyancy lab at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. From Michoud, Louisiana to Huntsville, Alabama, thousands of NASA and contractor employees work tirelessly to make sure that the crews are well trained and have the safest, most reliable hardware and facilities possible. Leland Melvin, a former professional football player, understands the importance of teamwork. I've played in some lots of highly functioning teams in, in my past and I would have to say that this is one of the most dynamic uh, highly charged organizations for getting really uh, difficult things done. It's fun to, to you know, when you're pre preparing for it and even after the mission to, to watch the space station fly over and think, wow, we're a part of that. And I hope everybody gets a chance to do that, to look as the space station flies over, you know, and, and think that's our space station. There are people living up there and, and uh, everybody gets to, you know, say that they had a part of building that. And I think that's very important and it's, it's, it's a neat feeling.